Happy Friday. We are very excited to be joined tonight by creative partner Tina Christensen. Friday. She is going to be showing us what she created with the samples from the new product release yesterday of triangles and the thank you kit. Um, so if you're joining us, drop a comment, say hello, let us know what you love about this new release. Uh, Tina's going to share what she created. Uh, Tina, if you want to say hello. Hi, everyone. We're very excited. We hello. showed you some of Tina's samples yesterday. If you watch the new product release, the cute pizza box, and she has a cake slice in there. So she's going to explain her process on those, uh, talk a little bit about the release, and then, um, and then uh, yeah, just hang out with us tonight on Friday. Just a few announcements. So if you're a Kiwi Club member, you were able to shop the new product release uh, today. So that was exciting. Let us know what you liked, what you got. We're very excited to hear your feedback. Um, and then if you're a community member, you can shop the new release on February 1st. Hi, Tina. I saw your comment. Yeah, I love the bird, uh, the bird and the cage. Oh, the bird cage. Yeah, it is super cute in the thank you kit. I think the bird cage would be cute because people said they could make a little dog house out of it yesterday. Some other people said that you can do some creative things with that. So I'd love to see that. Hi, Jackie. Tina, do you see comments? Tina Christensen, do you I see do comments? see. I do see the comments. I'm going to try and make sure they stay up on me because sometimes they disappear. But yeah. Well, I will be posting some links in the chat um, just uh, to the the shopping page for the new product release. If you're a Kiwi Club member, you can find the uh, shopping landing page on our website. If you go to the shop drop down um, and click new product release, uh, you will find all of our updated uh, products from yesterday. Well, with that being said, Tina, I'm gonna let you take over. Okay, wonderful. Welcome everyone, good evening. And I hope you're excited about the new products that we have. And I want to show you how I made these cute little boxes. Um, we're going to primarily focus on making the box itself and show you how I did that. And then I'll show you how I embellished for the pizza and how I made the flower using the thank you kit. Um, and then actually using one of our card borders for the side here. So, hi, I see a few names that I recognize popping up. I will try and keep the comments up. Sometimes they go off on my uh, iPad here, but I will hopefully keep up with that while I'm showing you everything. So I'm gonna set these off to the side. And I did put a supply list together here. Hopefully you can read that. So if you wanted to um, come back later and snap a screenshot or something of it, basically to put the box together, we either need two pieces of eight and a half by 11 or one piece of 12 by 12, because you can trace both on one piece of 12 by 12. Um, we're gonna use triangles four and five to actually make the box, which are the biggest of the triangles in the set of five triangles. And then we're gonna use triangle three when we make the um, sauce and the cheese to go on the box top. So those are the, the main things that we will be using. Hi Lisa and Tina and Lori and another Lori, I see you guys popping on. And I think there's a Jackie that I saw. So hello everyone. Um, the other tools that you're going to want is you're going to want a trimmer and a scoreboard, or I'll show you if you don't have a scoreboard, I'll show you a trick that with um, quite a few trimmers that you can use to do your scoring, a bone folder, a pair of scissors, and some liquid glue. So liquid glue is what works best, I find, for gluing things like boxes together because you really want your edges and your seams to stay together and sometimes some tapes don't always stay as well. So that's the supply list. I'll stick it over here to the side. And if anyone um, needs to grab a picture, you can certainly do that or a screenshot of that. We are going to start with our two largest triangles and our piece of paper. So let me grab a piece. I just have a piece of craft eight and a half by 11 here. 
Um, and what I'm going to do first is line up my two triangles for four and five. I'm going to put four inside five because what I want to do is have the outside of five and the inside of four as my lines to start with. So I'll uh, grab my pencil and we're just going to trace. And now what I do in order to not have to cut as many times is I line it up on the bottom edge of the paper here. And make sure I have some lead. And we'll just trace that out. And while we still have it all together, we're also going to trace the inside of four. And I layer four and five rather than using five and three because that way my inside is always centered and perfectly lined up with the outside. So once I remove that, I will have something like this left. So just to reiterate that, and we're going to cut two of these. We're going to trace triangle four and five, the inside edge of four, the outside edge of five, and we're going to cut out two. So let's go ahead and cut that out. And just grab the trimmer here. I already cut my second one out because I think most everyone likely knows how to cut paper and are probably experienced with your trimmer. Um, you could cut it by hand if you can cut a straight line and have that gift. Definitely feel free to cut by hand. But that is not, I can cut very short pieces fairly straight, but long pieces are not my gift uh, to be able to cut a straight line. So I'm just lining this up with my edge of my trimmer here. And make sure. Top and bottom are lined up and boom, I have that cut out. So you wanna do this twice because we need one for the top and one for the bottom. So I already cut two pieces out so you didn't have to watch me cut that. You can always, if you're watching this on replay to follow along, um, just pause when you get to that point. Uh, and then you can, um, hi Molly, you can, uh, cut, trace and cut, and then go back and start it again and watch the rest of the video. So feel free to pause anytime if you're watching the replay um, and finish that part and then keep going. If you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper that you want to use, I just wanted to show you, you can easily fit two of them on a 12 by 12 and still have extra pieces and scraps to use for something else. And again, I just lined the bottoms up. You could you know, move it over and align it here as well. But um, I just want to give myself less cuts to have to make and it's already a straight line, so why not use it? All righty. So now that we have these two pieces, our next step is to score. So let me show you a picture of what we're going to do. And we're going to score these differently because we have a box top and a box bottom. And in order for the bottom to fit inside the top, even though we've cut it the same, we need to actually make it slightly smaller when we put it in, you know, so that it fits in easily. You want it to pop in there and have a little bit of wiggle room. So we're gonna score slightly differently from each one. The first one we're going to score exactly along the lines that we drew for so that inside uh, triangle. The second one we're actually going to score a little, oh, and I, I drew this wrong. We're going to score on the inside. We need to score it slightly inside, not outside. Oh, I did put it right because these are my my line. So you want to make sure that you're inside the line that you drew here. So if this is the line you drew, you want to make sure you're inside only about an eighth of an inch. We only need to be inside a little bit, but just make sure you're inside. That's key. So we'll put one piece aside and we will grab our scoreboard and actually score this on the line. Now, because this line does not extend to show me exactly what score 
to use. I just grab a ruler and my bone folder and that just helps me if I line it up along the line that I drew on the paper. Then I can see where the closest score part of the scoreboard is without having to guess. So stick that up there and just going to pull my scoring tool right through here. And depending on the thickness of the paper that you're using, and I'm using cardstock, which is a little bit heavier weight. If you have really thin paper, you definitely want to do this lightly because if you score thin paper, it's gonna it can easily tear right through. If you've got cardstock, if it's a heavy weight cardstock, you may actually have to push harder or go more than once just to make sure that you have the score line showing up. So I found my score line and I'm going to go and do the score. Now I wanted to show you real quick, real quick. If you don't have a scoreboard and you can do it on a smaller one, if you have like the card size one, it works on that too. But if you don't have a scoreboard, but you have a trimmer that has this little groove right in here that the blade would run in, you can use that to score. So let me just do this. So we've got two sides scored. I don't know if you can see the bumps there. But let me just show you. You basically would line up the place that you need it to have scored. So I've aligned, this one has the wire, so I aligned it with the wire. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and just go right into that groove and gently go through and score. And I did go more than once back and forth because I have. Um, a little bit heavier weight cardstock. So this one should be scored right along the actual lines that we drew. So again, just a trick, if you don't have a scoreboard and you don't need to go out and uh, run out and buy one um, right away, they are great to have. You can use your trimmer and just use this spot right here where your blade runs. And, it, and then that can be any size trimmer, right? There's all kinds of trimmers out there. So, all right, so that one is our box top that we just scored. Now we're gonna score the box bottom. And again, this time we're gonna score inside of the line we drew. And so I'm going to again, use the ruler just to get where I'm at and make sure I'm in a score line. And well, that one's kind of right on. So I'm going to make sure that my other two are definitely inside. That one came in a little close. Let's see. I think this one will work. So that one, I'm inside the line. I don't know how well that'll show up here, but we're inside the line. So you can see we've got the two crosses and now we'll make sure this one is also inside our original drawn line so that one so basically i'm going like one click over on the the scoreboard if you're using your um trimmer you can literally you can line it up to where it's on the line and then move it just an eighth of the inch an eighth of an inch in one direction in order to score inside the line all right, so now that those are done, we can put our scoreboard to the side. And we are going to now fold our on our score lines. So this is where also if you have your bone folder, get nice crisp lines. It was a little noisy, so sorry about that. But that is how we get the nice folds of our box. That's one. And I'll fold the second one here. We so fold all three sides, get it nice and crisp. And one more. So is the key on the bottom box is make sure at least two sides 
are inside your original drawn line. So hopefully you can kind of see that these folds are inside. This one I ended up being right on, but this will still be small enough to fit inside the top when we put it together. All right, so now that we have this step done, our next step is to actually trim off the corners because we don't want all that bulk when we fold this into a box. And then we're going to snip after we trim the corner, we're going to snip it in half. Um, it's just less little pieces if you trim the corner first. So I'm going to go from the score line to the score line on each corner and just snip that off. And you don't need to bother with the trimmer on this because these aren't really going to show or matter. We're going to be gluing them down. So you don't need to worry about if they're perfect straight line. If it bothers you and you prefer to use a trimmer, go for it. But I'm okay with just cutting. So now that I've trimmed those corners off, I am going to actually just trim or cut so that we can fold these in to be boxes, you know, the edges of the box right here and split it right down the center. So I'm just guessing at the middle, we're just going to use these flaps for gluing and I'm going to cut right to the corner of the score line. So we've done that on one and then we will do it on the other. Now this one, since our score lines are not on our drawn line, in order to make it smaller, I need to actually look at where my score line is and cut to the center. So you'll see here, we actually cut a little bit into the triangle, but that's okay because we need that box bottom to fit into the top. All right. So six corners, almost done. And that is our next step. So we're not quite there yet to put it together because if we started trying to fold, we could fold this up, but you're gonna see that these are not gonna be even edges. So we do need to do one more step in order to get a nice crisp, clean edge when we fold it together. So if you just, went with where we're at now, you'd end up having to trim pieces off and get an uneven edge. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take these, the edge that we've cut. So this is our score line right here and where we get a wonky edge. And we're going to fold it over so that the edge here aligns with the edge of our box. So we get a nice crisp edge. So basically we're, we're folding it into our, where we cut into our corner between the two pieces. So let me show you on the actual one, but I wanted to have a piece that you could look at. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to take and fold this over so that I'm right here at the, the point of where I cut into, but I'm going to align this at the top. So I have a nice straight edge. And this is depending on your, the weight of your cardstock, a bone folder might be a good idea here as well. Again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold basically right up straight with the top edge of the box and fold that up. So now when I fold this together, this is going to match. And the only reason this one is a little bit uneven here, so you can see, which won't really matter because um, this is our bottom and it'll get covered up is because I didn't score in the same distance all the way around. I, I messed up on this one and, and didn't grab the right score line. So again, I'm going to take this, fold it over so that my edges align. So this we end up doing six times because now we've got six edges to work with. Fold that one in. And the last one. 
And now at this point, when we fold these up, we have our box forming. And this happens to be our bottom. And what you could do now is you could go ahead and glue these flaps together. And then once they're glued together, you would need to add glue on one side or the other and glue it to the side. The other option you can do is if you want, you can cut this little extra, this little flap. So one of our score lines from the outside, I'll, I'll show you both ways. Um, it just gives a little less bulk within the box. Totally optional. It will work both ways. Um, the boxes I made, I did one one way, one the other. So now with this, we'll glue both ways just so you can see. All I'm gonna do is take my liquid glue, put it right there, and just make sure I line up that edge and I'm just gonna hold it for a few seconds. This still only takes, a, this is, um, uh, I like to use the Scotch Quick Dry or Scotch Tacky Glue is what I have in this fine line bottle, um, but any liquid craft glue should work just fine. Um, I'm also now going to take, instead of having this little flap sticking out, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue right in there and then hold that down. So I'm just holding that with my finger here in order to get that nice and flat. But use your favorite glue. I do not like on boxes like this to use um, tape runner type adhesive only because I find they don't always stay together and then you end up gluing it anyways. So this side I'll show you, I'll do it without cutting this extra flap off. I'm just gonna glue, again, hold that, line up our corner here. And then I'm gonna just, now that that's lined up, hold this together. And so now you just see here how there's a bigger piece to glue down. Um, we'll just throw some glue in there. I like this tip on here that lets me get a nice fine line of glue and get into places. So I'm just gonna hold that down for a few seconds and get that together. And depending on where you get your glue, you can always stick a little bit in this corner here to make sure you get a nice crisp edge right there. So I've got this last one. I'm just gonna, for a little less bulk, clip off these pieces here. So we got that clipped off and then we'll get those glued together and our box bottom will be put together. Then we'll run through it one more time just to put the top together. I'll just talk through what I'm doing as we glue that together. And we'll hold these down. This is the, you know, hum the Jeopardy tune or something like that to, for how long you need to hold it down. But there we do. There we have it. We have our box bottom put together. And we're going to go ahead and now do the same thing. We're going to do the folding over to line up to the edges here so that we get that nice, neat edge. And you could go, you could cut as you fold. Um, I tend to do things systematically. And so I need to do all of one fold and then all of the next step and all of the next step to get it done. But if you like to do like all of one corner at a time, um, the only thing I would say is if you leave the, if you do all, do it that way and do all the pieces or parts of one corner at a time, um, I would not glue everything until you're ready to do all the gluing just because if you get two sides glued it's a little bit harder to do any work on the third side because you cannot lay anything down um i think i answered your question bridget but i'm using i like to use the scotch quick dry it used to be called quick dry now i think it's called tacky glue um 
and that's what I put in my fine line bottle. Um, but there are a lot of different glues out there. That just happens to be my go-to glue. Um, and it works well in this, in the fine line bottle. And this fine line bottle has a um, 18 gauge tip on it. Um, and I find the glue comes out fine out of the 18 gauge tip. If you get the 20 gauge, it is actually a smaller opening. They just tried to buy a replacement tip for one that I uh, needed to replace because I damaged the needle. And I accidentally bought um, eight, uh, 18 gauge tips or 20 gauge tips and they are a much smaller opening and I find it a lot harder to squeeze the glue through. So my favorite is the 18 gauge tip on the fine line bottle and I don't have a problem with, um, you know, getting the glue out or having to squeeze real hard unless my tip gets clogged. And if my tip gets clogged, all I need to do is pop it in a mug of hot boiling water, let it sit for a while, and um, then run it under hot water to clean out any goop inside. And it does quite well. And I've had these bottles for years. And I just, the first time I damaged the tip, I know other, you know, depending on if you get the glue stuck in it, but um, yeah, I just like to, that's where I go to a, get my, make a cup of tea for myself and a cup of hot water for my glue tip and let it soak. So, all right, so all I've been doing here while we've been, while I've been chatting about glue tips is, uh, putting the box, box together. So this is my box lid. This should be the bigger one. We will know shortly if it all worked well. Um, but you'll see how this one, because it's all on the lines that we, we scored on the lines that we drew, we have a nice um, even matching. So if you can get your score lines on your bottom evenly spaced that eighth inch in from your original tracing, then you should have a nice even box. So we have our bottom and our top and here's the reveal of it fits in, fits in perfectly. You want the bottom, you'll see it is a little bit smaller, but you want it to be smaller. Um, Otherwise you just, you end up struggling getting it in and out. All right, so there's our basic box. And I will run through that again um, at the end, just to, to go through it. But let me show you what I did to embellish my pizza box because, you know, it needs to have something on top, right? So first of all, um, we needed some sauce and some cheese. So all I did on this was, again, trace. And this is where I use template uh, three of the triangles because that is basically the inside of four. So we use five and four. So I'm using three because that's the inside and I want this piece to fit on top of my box. So we're going to do, so you could trace the inside of four or you could trace three. I just had three already pulled out. Um, and again, I'm lining it up on the bottom. Now this one doesn't matter quite so much because we are not going to quite follow these lines and I should have traced on the back, but that's okay. Normally I trace on the back when I'm using, especially a pattern or texture of some sort so that I don't have any lines. But the way we're gonna cut this, it won't matter. And I'm going to cut the sauce first and I'm just going to cut a wavy line. So this, you don't have to be perfect cutting at all. Um, and Bridget, I will go on afterwards and I will give you that information. They're just called fine line applicators. And if you have a local scrapbook store, they would probably be able to get them for you. 
Um, but I can look at that and I'll try and go on afterwards and, and show you a picture of it. Um, I'll find my one that is less used. I have two, one is very well used and you can't read the <laughs> label anymore. But I'm gonna cut, I cut this triangle just slightly inside my line because I wanna layer that on top of my box here, but I want it to cover most of the box. Um, and then I'm going to take the yellow piece, the glue. Thank you, Lisa. I knew she would know because we both have them. This one I'm going to cut even more inside um, so that it can layer on top of the sauce, but and still have a little bit of red showing through. Um, yeah, Lisa and I both have several of these bottles. So, and Lisa, I think you can you use. Um, I think you've used some other glue in there. I don't know if you have another one that you would find that you find you like in there or not. I just always go to the same glue because it works. So why break what works, right? All right, so now I have my cheese for on top of my sauce and you can easily um, add you know, make it big, can't make it bigger, but you could make it smaller if you wanted more sauce to show. Now these, these pieces could be put on with a tape runner. I just don't have that sitting here. I put my, brought my glue over here for right now. But I'm just gonna pop these on with some glue. And just kind of layer them up so it doesn't have to be even or perfect because it's pizza and you never see cheese perfectly aligned on pizza. Or at least I haven't. Um, so next thing we are going to do is I wanted to, I punched out some pepperoni. I just grabbed some red cardstock out of my stash of scraps. And this one happened to be a 5 8 inch punch circle punch that I use to cut these. Again, just like long straight lines. Um, circles are not my thing to cut out to look like circles. And if you ever buy the packages of little pepperonis, they do look like they punch them out um, or cut them out of a log or a sausage thing or something. Anyways, so I used a punch and I happened to have a 5 8 and that seemed to be a good size for on here. And then I also did my olives. Um, you can do two ways for these. I punched a bunch of them already, just so you wouldn't have to watch. If you have a punch that does reinforcers, um, that seemed to be about the perfect size. The other option though, if you don't, I wanted to show you, is all you need is two different size hole punches. So, First thing you'd want to do is do your inside hole. So I just grabbed my crocodile because that has a smaller hole on it. I don't know if it's quite a quarter inch, it might be, but somewhere about a quarter inch hole punch. So if you have your standard office hole punch, that would work fine. But you want to do the little hole first. And then you can take your second punch, which something's bigger, you know, anything bigger. And this one happens to be a half inch one align your hole in the center and punch and you would have an olive. So that is a little trick on how to do circles. If always do your inner circle first and then move to your outer ones. If you do your outer one, then you got to try and hold that and line it up and that just doesn't always work too well. Now for the peppers, literally all I did was cut a squiggly line of green. So if you don't like peppers, you don't have to put them on your pizza. And if you wanted to make mushrooms, you could do that out of some white or cream cardstock. Um, I don't have many mushrooms. Well, I don't particularly care for mushrooms on my pizza, so I didn't put mushrooms on this pizza. Um, so after I cut all the pieces, Literally, I kind of just sprinkled them on top to get a little bit of a random look. And, uh, you know, 
I just kind of put them all over. So you could arrange them or you could kind of be a little random. You could cut pieces off, um, throw some olives on top. And you can be more artistic in arranging them or you can kind of let them randomly fall. You could layer things on top of each other. If you like extra meat on it, put more pepperoni or something. I didn't come up with a really good way to do sausage because it's not, it's kind of all crumbly. Um, maybe crumpling up papers, but it would give more bulk. So what I could do now is glue those down and I would have a pizza box. So what I wanted to also show you is just how I made the flour that I did on the cake box because I used the thank you kit for that. Um, so I made the box the same way. I just made it out of white cardstock. And for the trim on the edges here, I used Frolic 3. Now you'll notice I did not use the full, one, full uh, height or thickness that the actual template is. What I did is I aligned the bottom edge of my paper to the tops of these three, four, five inch marks. If you don't have the set with those marks on it for some reason, just do about halfway because a full size of, of all of them, of both of them, it would just overlap. So oh, I love that, Susan. That's a great, that would be a great um, even like Valentine type thing, and you could, you know put a treat in there for your Valentine and give them a little pizza box with that, with the uh, every pizza of me loves every pizza of you from Susan. So I love that idea. Um, but anyway, so that's what I used for the edges. This I just did quarter inch strips around the top. So let me just show you what I did for the flower, just because it's another different way of using these three thank you templates, and then I did use the leaf. So you all know how to cut and trace. So I've already cut these out and I just did them in um, different colors. And I like purple, blue, and green. So you get purple and blue and green. Um, but all I'm doing, going to do on to make this flower here. So I'm gonna take the flower I traced and so I'm using seven, three, and one in the thank you set. And I'm just going to randomly, and it does not have to be perfect circles, so that's why I'm cutting this. I'm gonna randomly cut it into a spiral. And I'm gonna do that with all three pieces. So to get more of a spiral, you'd have to make it a little bit thinner on the smaller ones. And then I'm just, I'm going to twist them around. I'll show you that in a second and layer them together. Now, of course you could ink the edges on these and that would be fun to do. Oh, you're on a roll, Susan. Look at, look at all these, you're gonna have to put all these down. Uh. So all I'm gonna do is roll this up. Now, if you have thicker cardstock, this is, this is a little bit thinner weight that you're using, you can use like the edge of your bone folder and like you would do a curling ribbon in order to start to get the uh, paper to curl, you could run the bone folder along the paper. Um, this one, this paper isn't thick enough to need that. But all I'm doing is spiraling it up. And then as it opens, this little bit in the center becomes your bottom. But what I did is I opened it up a bit more in order to layer it when I made the flower over here. So just pull it open. You could leave it certainly like that and just glue it all at the bottom. Um, or you can do, you can layer it up. So I'm just gonna roll this. up, kind of, if you flatten it as you do it, you may need to kind of squish it 
back into a circle shape. Then you can tuck that in the center there. And that almost looks nice just like that. But since I cut this, we'll go ahead and do this. And yes, I saw somebody, I'm sorry, I missed your name, mentioned that the white box could be used for a party favor or a shower, wedding, something like that. And I think that would be a great idea. I think it would look really pretty like that. So, oh, good. That'd be fun to have some little printable tags. Um, so you can layer these up. You could do one color, two color, I almost like just the two color. But if you were doing it on a white box, it would definitely, um, you could match colors to whatever your theme is. Then I just cut out the leaves from Thank You Too, add that to it. And depending on how this one's, there's more spiral in it and it's closer together. This one, I had it widened out. So I put some glitter in the center, stickles, pearls, um, you know, any kind of gemstones. You could definitely make it match any theme. Since I was choosing the colors, I used my favorite colors in order to put it together. But that is how I did that. So I'm just going to quickly review the steps on the box, just as a reference. Um, the supplies were two pieces of eight and a half by 11 or one piece of 12 by 12. Triangle set, trimmer, scoreboard, or you can use the trick of a trimmer as a scoreboard. Your bone folder, scissors, liquid glue. You're going to trace triangle five and four together. Layered inside each other. Trace the outside and the inside. Next step is to score along the lines that you cut or that you trace, the inside lines that you traced here. You're going to score for the box top right on the lines. For the box bottom, you're going to score about an eighth of an inch in all the way around from your original trace lines. Then you're going to cut off the corners and cut right down the center on all three corners of your triangle. And then your last step is to fold that edge in so that it aligns with the top edge where you folded it. And then at this point, you can bring the pieces up to fold, make your corner, or optionally, you can cut off some of this excess before you glue it together. Glue it all together and you've made your box. So I hope you have fun with these. Love to see what other types of boxes um, or other things you could turn the boxes into. I have some other ideas, just not enough time yet to uh, make them. But I thought if you made a bunch of them and put them all in a circle and use different sizes of the triangles. So I use five and four, but then if you use four and three and three and two, could probably make like a three layer cake if you wanted to replicate like a little wedding cake or a layered cake that were favor boxes that everyone could take one, take a piece of cake with them. Um, so just, I think there's a lot of fun things you could do with these and turn them into other things. So I look forward to seeing what you do with them and uh, look for those pictures. <laughs> yes. If there's a piece of cake or a piece of pizza or a piece of pie, anything you want it to be. So thanks for joining me. Have a great evening.